Welcome back everyone to Frame Rated. Today I want to zero in on the Nintendo Switch GPU, the part of the console responsible for delivering the graphics you see in every game that we love on the Nintendo Switch. And while the Switch is known for its portability and unique design, the real question is what kind of power is under the hood for those who don't already know? Well, let's dive into this fan favorite. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, that way you can catch my tech videos. And if you enjoyed this video at all, make sure to smash the like button, that way YouTube will actually pick up this video on the algorithm and show it to other people who enjoy it as well. I really appreciate all your support. Now let's dive into the topic at hand. The Nintendo Switch uses the NVIDIA Tegra X1 SoC with a GPU based on NVIDIA's Maxwell architecture. Originally released in 2015, the Tegra X1 was designed for mobile use, meaning it prioritizes efficiency and low power consumption, essential for a portable console like the Switch. The GPU is embedded alongside the CPU in a single chip, optimized for performance without overheating or draining battery life as much as possible. While it's not a powerhouse compared to PCs or other console GPUs during its time when it was released, it's a smart choice for Nintendo's vision of flexible and on-the-go gaming. The Switch GPU powers its games with 256 CUDA cores, which are NVIDIA's parallel processing units that handle graphics calculations. These cores are capable of decent performance for a device its size. However, 256 cores are modest by modern standards, where GPUs and PCs can have thousands of cores, even around the time that the Switch came out. But for the Switch's resolution and graphical needs, 256 cores balance power and efficiency. This GPU runs at two different clock speeds, depending on the mode the console is in. When it is docked, it uses a 768 MHz clock speed. And when it is using a portable mode, it goes as low as 307.2 megahertz. This is done primarily for power reduction, improving battery life considerably when in handheld mode. And since the Switch has a 720p panel built in for a native resolution, games can also render the resolution at that lower 720p, which helps performance scale a little bit. That way the GPU doesn't have to work as hard for the same graphics, even though the clock speed is more than cut in half. This adaptability allows the Switch to provide a smoother experience on a large screen without losing too much efficiency. And this is all thanks to the aforementioned Maxwell architecture. While older, it is known for delivering good performance at low power levels for its time. It's the reason the Switch can run demanding games without generating much heat or killing battery life quickly, allowing games such as Doom Eternal, albeit with major cutbacks compared to its other console competitors, to run on the Switch regardless of handheld or portable mode. However, Maxwell lacks some of the more advanced capabilities found in NVIDIA's newer GPU designs. Obviously, things like ray tracing and whatnot weren't a thing back then, so the Switch has been lacking this new technology. In the last four years, we've been in this current generation, although this current generation isn't very good at ray tracing itself either. But for a Nintendo Power console, this type of GPU makes sense for rendering all the games that Nintendo is known to produce. Animal Crossing, Mario Kart, Mario games in general, Pikmin, the works. It's graphics that are on board the Switch can handle games like these, and at the end of the day, that is all that matters. And because the Switch supports a 720p to 1080p resolution, whereas the Series S and above for the Xbox and the PS5 and above for PlayStation all target 1440p to 4K gaming respectively. This allows the Switch to punch above its weight because it's targeting a lower resolution in general, so it makes it just that much easier to port games over from these other consoles to the Switch and actually have it playable when many would think it would not be playable at all. But Nintendo's first party games really show how much focus they have on optimizing games for their hardware. Titles like Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey look fantastic on the Switch, and it's not because of the raw graphical power, but it's because they're designed to run efficiently on the Tegro X1 as possible and provide as much eye candy as they can to the art direction of the game within those hardware constraints. But if we double back to games like Doom or even The Witcher 3, obviously developers have to make major adjustments in textures, lighting, effects, frame rate, and resolution in order to make the games run. This sometimes means sacrificing detail well beyond what some people would expect a game to look running on a modern day console whatsoever, albeit it is impressive that they can still pull it off. Even if it's at 30 frames per second and lowest settings, I still am shocked this little thing with just over one gigahertz CPU, four gigs of RAM, and this little NVIDIA Maxwell GPU can handle all together. But at the end of the day, the Nintendo Switch GPU may not be the raw powerhouse of today's high-end systems, but it's well-balanced choice for a hybrid console, especially the first of its kind launched over eight years ago now. 
And NVIDIA's Tegra X1 GPU allows the Switch to blend portability with a decent level of graphical performance even to this day, proving that even modest hardware can provide great gaming experience when used creatively and developed efficiently for. It also gives me a lot of hope for the Nintendo Switch 2, which is rumored to be significantly more powerful. A lot of people are saying it's essentially a PlayStation 4 Pro in your pocket in terms of graphical power. And since it'll be running NVIDIA technology with their next generation APU style SoC, we should be seeing a considerable performance jump, not just in raw raster, but we also will finally get new features to Nintendo, such as ray tracing and AI upscaling, which even if Nintendo continues their trend of using lower level hardware compared to their competitors and focusing more on the user experience, they can opt for a low quality GPU rumors being a RTX 2050 in terms of graphical compute, and then utilize DLSS machine learning to enhance its base performance levels. And if the regular Switch with its Tegra X1 chip can still last today in 2024 and still handle game, then a GPU that has AI upscaling is going to last even further. But that's all I have for you guys in today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.